Hi, Kirk here from Aero Precision. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to build for suppressed use on an AR-15. Suppressors, when added to the end of a firearm, are gonna generally increase back pressure. This is specifically important on gas-operated firearms like the AR-15, because that's gonna change the way the rifle or pistol operates a little bit. So the way an AR-15 works overall, it's important to understand this uh, when you're kind of approaching this, is as the bullet fires and goes down the barrel, there's a gas port here, that's where your gas block goes, uh, that bleeds off some of the gas back up into the gas tube here into the bolt carrier group. Once it goes into the gas key of your bolt carrier group, it's gonna expand in this little chamber right here against your gas rings, and that's gonna push everything forward and cycle the action. So when you add a suppressor to the end of your firearm, it's gonna increase that back pressure um, and add more gas to the system than the rifle is to maybe tuned for. So what you're gonna be looking to fix there is not necessarily the, the gas. The gas is the cause of the problem, but the symptom we're trying to solve is increased carrier velocity. So how fast that bolt carrier group is moving rearward in the firearm during its cycle of operations. Something universal before we even kind of get into the, the tuning and the, the finer points of that is, especially if you're running a suppressor, there are some exceptions to this, uh, but you should almost always be running a full mass M16 bolt carrier group. Something else to pay attention to is make sure you're getting your barrel from a quality manufacturer and it's ported correctly. Um, you're working against yourself a lot if your barrel is already ported way too much from the factory, um, and that's gonna require more work to get that carrier velocity down to where it needs to be. So there's two ways we can go about this. They're not the only two ways, but they're kind of the two easiest, um, especially if you're new to, to uh, this platform and just want something you can kind of throw at it to alleviate it, and they both do it very well, um, in my opinion. The first of which is gonna be an adjustable gas block. Um, these are really nice because they give you the option to fine tune your gas to the exact right amount you need for suppressed and unsuppressed. And you can change it for both as the uh, situation requires or demands. So these are really good for that. It is something you have to, you know, it's another setting essentially. So if you don't wanna have to worry about that, there are better options like the one we're about to get into. But this is gonna give you a ton of flexibility with your Air 15. The uh, second option that people like to do is actually tuning it back at the buffer here. So the adjustable gas box is gonna remove that excess gas. Tuning it at the buffer is gonna add resistance to the bolt carrier group to slow it down. So kind of two different ways of dealing with that problem of the increased carrier velocity. So right here I have four different buffers. You have your standard carbine buffer. This is what a lot of people are probably already running in their AR-15s. It's the lightest option out there. But we also have an H, an H2, and an H3. Uh, those go up in weight as you go up in the numbers. Um, and that's gonna add more resistance to that system, slowing that carrier down. This is a really good option if you don't wanna mess with settings, you want something that'll run good, suppressed and unsuppressed. Um, it might be a little bit overgassed, but that's honestly okay, especially if the rifle might be subject to some adverse conditions or varying quality of ammo. Um, so buffers are a really good option there for that. What I will say is if you are using a buffer, I would set it up to where the rifle has the right amount of gas to run unsuppressed and it just takes the edge off a little bit when you add a suppressor. That way it'll work in both conditions. Something to take into account when tuning at the buffer is there's no hard fast rule for every gun. Um, gas system length, barrel length, a caliber, all sorts of things are gonna kinda play into effect as far as what buffer weight you should use. So there may be some trial and error um, involved in selecting one. I will say it's better to be a little bit too light than too heavy. A little bit too light, again, you're gonna have an increased carrier velocity, um, but it's still gonna slow it down some. If it's too heavy though, you could have cycling issues, it won't lock open on an empty mag, a whole bunch of stuff with that. So I would, again, if you're stuck between two and you're not sure, go with the lighter one. Um, if you have a chance to throw a heavier one in down the road and test it and it works fine, then go with the heavier one. But uh, don't jump immediately to an H3 just because it's the heaviest. For more information or to purchase your very own adjustable gas block or heavy buffer, visit our website at aeroprecisionusa.com.